All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to stream. Oh, my God. Ugh. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to stream today. Hello, hello. <laughs> What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? How we how we living? How we vibing today? Hello, hello. I hope we're all doing well. Hope we're all doing good today. Um, just letting you know now, this is the max amount of energy you're getting from me for this entire stream. <laughs> Not rough sleep, kind of a kind of a rough headspace. Um, so this is about the max that you're getting from me for today. So I'm just kind of I'm just letting you know that like I am. I'm not sick. No, I'm just uh, I'm just in a space at this moment, but I'm I'm fine. I'm I'm here. So, if I go silent at random intervals, then it's just because of this kind of mental state that I'm in at this moment. But I drained. Yeah. Um that's that's right. <laughs> um did I only get seven and a half hours of sleep? I actually did get seven and a half, seven hours of sleep. Um, I got a full night's sleep. Don't worry about me. I'm just in a state. Um, but yes, I am here. We are going to be talking about, as the stream title says, we're going to be talking about drawing with reflective surfaces. And reflective doesn't only mean glass. We're going to be talking about, I would talk about water, but we have a water stream coming up. So we're not actually going to talk about that one. Um... We're going to be talking about stuff like glass. We're going to talk about metals. We're going to talk about, uh, like, like glazed clay, that sort of thing. Um, don't fry my brain. It's, it's, uh, we're too late on that. Um, 20% is just soup. Yeah, that's right. That's about right. Um, but before we get going, oh my God, I didn't pull out my script. I was actually prepped today. And that's the one thing I didn't do. But before we get going. If you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds, and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below, and check out our website for our class offerings, where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us, so we can keep making free content. Consider consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges, or supporting us on Patreon for as little as two dollars per month, where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots, so be sure to check those out before they are gone. All right. I hope you feel better. Thank you. All right. But before we get going, it, we have, I've missed it a couple of weeks. I apologize. Um, But before we get going, we also have the submissions for this week. It is March, so that means we have a new topic altogether. It is March of Robots. If you don't know that art trend, it's when artists tend to draw like robots. <laughs> I did that in one breath, basically. Um, it's when artists tend to draw robots for the entire month, so March of Robots. I'm probably actually going to participate a little bit. Um, the Discord is Patreon a member only. No, it's not. You can join the Discord uh, for free. Exclamation point Discord. This is how these people have submitted their work uh, is through our Discord. This first one is by Calico in the Discord, the book bot. I love this. It's like, it's like a little, either like a little book return or like, have you ever, guys, you guys ever seen like a community library where like, if you have like little, uh, if when you have like little communities or little, uh, like towns and they just have like a, a little book box in the center that you can drop. If it, you can take the books for free, but the only thing that you have to do is also leave a book. It's really cute. I love that. Yeah, take a book, leave a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those. So like, it's kind of kind of like a robotic version of that. I think this is really cute. Um, you can do a lot with a very simple design. So I think that this one is really, really cute. This next one is by Emmy in the Discord. These are phenomenal. I love how fun and simple you've made the backgrounds this line art is so like fun very very earthboundy i say earthbound not because it's like oh it's like that's how like it look always looks because you have like the it, that's what people say when they have like a fun rpg it's like hey it's like earthbound this one it, it uses the earthbound text <laughs> it uses the earthbound font i'm a really big fan of black shading um you did a really good job with these i think the poses are really fun um it's actually all celled as well. Like it's it's a very you can see some of like the more reflective surfaces still use like only cell shading, and I think that's really fun. I still haven't like 
figured out how black shading works. Um, and it's like this, you did this, you did it flawlessly. You did it really, really well. I really love these character designs. Well done. This next one is by Iceyobe, who we've seen a few times. Uh, Iceyobe in the Discord. This is a really fun character design as well. I love robots, man. Like, it's a thing that, like, I don't, uh, like, I say, like, to my commissioners, like, hey, I won't do your robots for you, but I love robots. Like, this is, this is a really fun design. I love the really whippy tail. I love the, the different, like, shapes that you've used throughout. It, it, like, you kept it with... You kept it fairly anatomically correct, but you actually kept it quite simple, and I think that that's really fun. Um, really, really well done. This is a really fun design. Thank you so much for submitting. I love my Earthbound. Me too. Mother 3 is my favorite of the trilogy, though. This next one is by Jack in the Discord. More of like a cyberpunky kind of character, cyborg kind of character. I think this one's really fun. Um... On the one hand, my partner, he really likes, like, medieval stuff. I'm more of a cyberpunk person, so I really love, like, synthwave and that kind of, like, cyberpunk, like, robotic kind of feel. Um, so I'm a really big fan of that overall aesthetic, yet I have not watched the anime cyberpunk. I apologize to those of you who are really big fans of that, but I just, I, I haven't bothered. <laughs> um, but this is a really, really cool illustration. I love the bright neon colors. Again, like, I love neons. I just don't use them as much as I should, as much as I should, you know. Um, really, really fun stuff. Thank you so much for submitting. This is the last one, I believe. Yes, this last one is by Ziggy in the Discord, who had a little... Kind of looks like a Nintendo Switch cat. <laughs> With the black and the red and the blue. Uh, they said that this is their kind of, like, robot cat character. I think that the... This is just a really cute design. I do like it when, like, um, robots tend to have more of a... Uh, what do you call it? Like, more of an organic feel. I think that it's really fun. Um... <laughs> I apologize if, if me saying that this is like a like a Nintendo Switch cat was a little awk, but like I, I still really uh I love this one. I think this one's really cute. Um I really love the this line style where it's like really thick at one end and then it gets super super thin. It's a very uh pen strokey kind of way of working. Um I don't really work like this. I, I tend to be quite uh meticulous in a different way, but this is a very loose way of working and I think it's really cool. Um, but yes, all right, thank you all so much for submitting um, your work. I saw all of them because I am the one who <laughs> who picks them, but thank you all so, so much for submitting for this week. Um, and we'll have a new round of them for next week as well. All right, reflective surfaces. I'm gonna try and keep this lesson pretty quick just so I can get to the drawing portion. Um, I just want to get to the drawing portion quick <laughs> because I tend to work really, really slow with reflective surfaces and I know that I'm going to end up working really, really slow today regardless. So I'm like, I want to, I want to make sure that I'm not spending too long. Cause really here's the, here's the thing when it comes to reflective surfaces, you sound tired today. I gave a little explanation in the beginning. I'm not necessarily tired, I'm just in a headspace, so this is like the max amount of energy you're getting from me today, I apologize. I, I just straight up don't have it in me. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, I need to give myself a stretch. And again, I apologize if I go silent for long periods of time. Um, I'll do my best to like read chat and do the normal kind of roundabouts. Um, but yeah, reflective surfaces. Am I smoothing up? No, it's not. What does give me energy in the morning? Uh, usually when I get to work immediately. <laughs> well, you have this 40%, you give 40%, you gave 100% that day. That's true. What's something you used to not like drawing but are now fine with? Pretty much everything. I think the only thing that I don't like drawing still is like vehicles. But like I love perspective up, up to like five point because that's what I know how to do. Um, I love hands. I love weird anatomy. I love foreshortening. I love everything that's difficult. I think it's pretty fun. 
All right, reflective surfaces. So reflective surfaces will include glass, metals, glazed clay, some foods, etc. That sort of thing. If it can reflect light, then it is a reflective surface, right? When I say reflections, I don't mean like, because technically everything is reflecting light to an extent. Um, that's how we see its color. But when I say reflective surfaces, I mean more like shiny surfaces, like things that can have some kind of like, uh, you know, like harsh shine to it, right? You can't hear the music now? Let me turn up the music a little bit. It's uh, it's pretty low, so I'll just turn that up. Oops. Let's turn that up a little bit. Hopefully that's a little bit better. <laughs> that's good? All right. This includes glass, metals, glaze, clay, some foods, etc. That sort of thing, right? I'm not going to write this down, but whenever you have like, okay, that's a little bit loud though, I think, unless if that's fine for you guys. Hang on. It's so delicate, like trying to... <laughs> All right, sure, we'll just leave it there. Um, because I'm pretty quiet today, so I'm like, I don't want to... <laughs> it's good, okay. Um, oops, sorry. So reflective surfaces include like glass, metals, glaze, clay, some foods, right? It, when I, whenever you try and look up a, like a, a tutorial on reflective things though, right? I always find that they tend to always pertain to that artist's art style. They're always like, okay, this is how I draw water. This is how I draw glass. This is how I draw X, Y, Z, right? And it's like, it's one of those like really tough um, things that you gotta figure out, right? Because, like, you kind of sit there and you're like, you're like, I don't know, something's, like, something's wrong here, right? So, reflective surfaces are, I think, the toughest texture to figure out. So, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna say a couple things that you want to keep in mind when you're working with something reflective, because if you have a simpler art style, obviously, you're not gonna go for the super painted look, right? If you have a super painted art style, or you're not gonna go for the more cell shaded look. So really, this is all about being able to distinguish textures from one another rather than it just being, oh, hey, this is exactly how you do X, Y, Z, because it's going to be different for every artist once you figure out your own art style. So things to keep in mind. Twenty percent looking at the lesson, eighty percent looking at the little animated Jesse. Part of me wishes she was animated a little bit more, because there are different, you know, settings for her. <laughs> it's number one.
right? The more reflective the surface is, the more concentrated the shadows and highlights will be, right? If you've ever seen like glass, if you've ever seen like, well, of course you have, right? <laughs> but if you aim like a flashlight at it, right? You'll always get that like really bright um, reflection in it. It'll get that really, really bright reflected highlight back off. And the inverse of that is that you'll also get very, very harsh edges, right? Now, I usually, everybody's seen it done in a more painted way, right? So let's actually do this in a more cel-shaded way. All right. So let's say that we have a surface that's like this. All right, and I just draw like a really simple shadow on it. And let's say that there's like a slight bit of bounce light on this side. And then like maybe a little bit of a highlight on this side. <laughs> so this is a slightly more matte surface, right? The surface is a little bit more, a little bit less shiny. All right, you might not even add this highlight in you can even just, actually, I'm going to get rid of it. We could actually just draw it like this, all right? And you're like, oh, this is a more matte surface. I've only added the shadows in, right? But the second that I do this kind of magic, and now there's going to be like a really bright kind of reflection, like some bounce light off to this side. More of this shadow. And then a really bright. Oops. And a bright kind of reflection spot. Wow! It suddenly looks shinier. Alright. I sound different today. Yeah, no, I explained in the beginning that I'm like, I'm at like, I, I'm in a headspace right now. <laughs> so like, this is the max amount of energy you're getting from me today. I have like, I'm drained. I have like no energy today. So I'm not tired. I'm just drained. So we're, we're here right now. <laughs> um, Drink some coffee. I don't have coffee. Oh, but because I see some of my students in chat, um, I will be teaching you tomorrow. So just letting you know about that. <laughs> just to let you know. Um, try some green tea, best form of energy. I agree. Um, maybe I'll make some tea afterwards. I don't really have the time right now, but feel better. Thank you. Yeah, we have a matte surface right here, right? Why did why did it switch me to this brush? And then suddenly we have a shiny surface, right? Because we have more concentrated highlights. Oops. Okay. I do need my sleeve down. Concentrated highlight, a defined shadow, and a stronger bounce light. Be very...
Started adding subsurface scattering to your drawings. Fantastic, I'm glad. Hi, Faye. Hope you're doing well. Don't have energy to send, that's all good. Ever since Jesse's lesson in cell shading, I've been analyzing the cell shading, my favorite cartoons. I think with all like, um, what's it called? What do you call it? Um, with like animated cartoons, they, they cell shade differently than, than illustrators. <laughs> they really only have one layer of cell shading just to make it easier. sudden urge to draw. I think I might just draw while watching the stream. Good. I'm glad. But yes, yeah, so the more reflective the surface is, the more concentrated the shadows and highlights will be. They will be very concentrated in all styles. Every single style, when they want to determine that something is shiny, will have really concentrated highlights, really concentrated bounce light, and really concentrated shadows. Right. This will be visible in all styles, but how detailed you make it is determined by your style. Right. So something more simple, a simpler style would probably have something like this. Right. Something more intense. Right. You see a glass bottle, you're going to paint it like a glass bottle. Right. Let me show you an example because I have a an old glass bottle I definitely painted for a... What do you call it? There we are. Right? So the left is the is the original, the right is my painting, right? So adding in all of these extra shapes, adding in all of these extra textures, right? This is a more realistic way of approaching it, right? A lot of high contrast, a lot of sharp kind of edges, that sort of thing is really, really important, right? If I was to do this in a more simple way, oops. Like I would just have the bottle here. I'm not gonna do this quickly, I'm just letting you know that. I'm doing it quickly, so I'm not gonna like spend too long on it. But I might have like a shadow or two here. And then like a Right? And this also gets the job done, right? You can tell that it's still a really, really shiny surface. It's just super simple now, right? So depending on whatever style that you're working in will change how, you know, you work with reflective surfaces. So you have to reflect images like scenery or just light, just anything really, right? If you have a really simple style, more likely than not, you're not going to reflect actual images in the reflective surfaces, right? If you have a really, really simple kind of cartoony style, don't do that because it will make your work feel very, um, what's the word? Oh my God. It won't be harmonious, right? If you have like very, very detailed sections, but you have a very simple style, it'll feel really awkward. So if you have a more detailed style, more hyper-realistic style, that's when you start to reflect actual things within the surface. But if you have a more cartoony style, you're better off not doing it at all. Busy is another good word, yeah. Number two, we're only gonna go over three things. The more effective the surface is, more concentrated the shadows and highlights will be. Right, so not all reflective surfaces reflect color. Observe the surface to check if they do. Right? 
there isn't really a specific rule for this. It's more like I sometimes I see people who draw reflections and they're like, oh, it's reflecting this, so it has to reflect color. Or they draw a surface and it doesn't reflect color when it probably should, right? Think of like, hang on, let me find a glazed pottery. There we go. Glazed pottery, right? Wow, this image is crunchy. But you notice how it reflects, right? And the reflections are all just black and white, right? There's no real reflections that have color in them, right? And you might see the same thing with glass. You might see the same thing with, um, bearing. oh, this is a good one. Here we go. This is a good one. So, right, you have that raw, right, strong, concentrated shine here. You have some harsher edges off here. There's some bounce light that's really harsh, right? But it's all very, very matte. It's, well, not matte, but it's all like one kind of color, right? It's a very, very sharp, like, reflective shadow, reflective light kind of thing, but it's not in color. On the contrary, chrome. if we have something like chrome, oh my god, <laughs> can I look up a chrome car? Because I know people love that stuff. Yeah, there we go. This thing is hideous. I hate it when people do this with their car. Anyway, a chrome car, right? Look at how much color is being reflected in there, right? It is reflecting, it's like a mirror, right? It, the more mirrored it is, the more color will reflect onto it. But if it's a little bit less mirrored, if it's just shiny, more often than not, it won't. Some color, some like glass will reflect color though. So that's not necessarily true. It just depends on the material itself, right? I hate chrome cars. I'm glad that we all hate chrome cars. We have so many chrome cars in this area, right? So you see that with a normal chrome car, that's very reflective in that way. But if we look at this car, that's gold chrome, it actually doesn't really have much color reflected in it. It's much less, right? You can still see some color, but because of that gold, it's kind of removing that color from it, right? So it really depends on the material. And this is where I'm just gonna say, look at references, all right? Let me actually put these into the thing. I hate chrome so much. The only chrome that I will accept is called chrome nails. I love chrome nail art. This stuff is so cool. one more with no color, right? Where is it? There you are. Right, so it just depends on whatever surface you're working with. So it is just important to always look at your references.
Right, so transparent and semi-transparent surfaces that aren't flat will distort what's behind it, right? So I see this a lot with my students. <laughs> I see this a lot with people in general is where they have like a cup in front of something and a cup is a cylinder, um, but they just have everything go straight through the cup and they don't distort what's behind it at all. Again, I'm going to show you this in a very kind of simple way. I don't want to do anything like super painted, but let's say that we have like a, a kind of pink background. We've got like... You know what, let's just make the stripes, just to just to make it really easy. I'm not going for perfection, I'm going for something that'll work. <laughs> Alright, one, two. So let's say that we've got like a cup. We've got a glass cup, right? I would normally say don't do this, but I'm working off of time here. So I'm just using a black at low opacity. <laughs> right. Right, so there's no distortion applied to this one, right? Can you do this? Technically, yes, if you really want to, but I think it doesn't look right. Um, even if you're, what's it called? Even if you're more cartoony, right? The bits, like people always ask this, like how do you know how it's gonna distort? It's gonna distort in the direction of the form, right? This is a cylinder, it's gonna distort with those curves, right? So if I draw that same cup again, Right, the background is not going to look like this. First of all, there might even be some like, like you're most likely going to see your shadows and your, your highlights kind of following the shape of whatever it is too. This isn't perfect, I'm not using a reference, so we're just going off of what my brain is thinking will work. If you don't have the reference directly in front of you, right, it tends to just be fine if you just kind of guesstimate, methinks. But a good rule of thumb is just like, if you don't know how it distorts, it'll most likely distort with the shape of the thing itself. Again, this isn't perfect. I'd probably spend way more, I will, I would spend way more time on this, <laughs> but. Right, so transparent and semi-transparent surfaces that aren't flat will distort what's behind it. Right, windows don't distort anything. Sorry, I'm getting up for a second. Windows don't distort anything because they're flat, right? But even something like glasses will because it's a convex surface. Convex or concaves glass. Or there's a, there's a specific word for it. Like lenses, I don't remember what it is, but... Um, that kind of surface will distort what it is because the glass isn't perfectly flat, right? Cups will distort surfaces. Kind of funky or like stained glass will distort surfaces. What if the glass is more to reflect if the what gets water in it? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's well, it's not necessarily reflect. It just distorts more. 
again, there's a term for it that, like, my brain is not thinking of right now. <laughs> so. But yes, all right. Those are kind of just, like, my three tips. I don't want to go over this for too long. I've already spent too long. Um, but number one, the more reflective the surface is, the more concentrated the shadows and the highlights will be. This one is, like, the biggest one. That's the one you want to remember the most. Number two is not all reflective surfaces reflect color. Observe the surface and check if they do. And number three is transparent and semi-transparent surfaces that aren't flat will distort what's behind it. All right. Good rule of thumb is... Good rule of thumb is that the shape will follow or that the distortion will follow the shape of the form number four i'm not even just gonna i'm not even gonna elaborate number four use reference can't figure it out look up a reference i promise young artists it's the thing you should do or maybe not even young Less experienced artists, it's the things you should do. <laughs> After this, you're gonna watch Bluey and take a nap? I can't, I gotta do your feedback. Um, but alright, you know, that's gonna be the lesson-y portion. Sorry, I need to check something. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be the lesson-y portion, so let's move on to the illustration. Now, you guys voted for something with stained glass. And see, I had an idea, but I realized how difficult that idea is going to be, and I realized that that's actually a bad idea, um, so I'm not going to do exactly what I had in mind. So now I actually have to think of something new, which perhaps is a bad idea, <laughs> but here we are, I guess. How do we feel about me drawing weaponry? Because I'm like, that's kind of simple. I could work on a more simple style with that. How do we feel about that? How do, you, how do we all feel about me drawing weaponry? Sure, yes please? Alright. You can, you can be introduced to another D&D character of mine. <laughs> New character? Yeah, yeah, I've been thinking about her a little bit. Her name's Ethelan. Based off of the doll artist Ethelan, because she inspired me to, to make this character. But yeah, I'm gonna work with something more simple. I'm gonna work in a very kind of game arty style. Even if she's- even though she's a bard, I will give her- Give her some very non bardy weapons for a moment. Kirby drawing. This is my D and D character, Etlan. When's my birthday? June twentieth. We've got a long way to go. <laughs> I turned twenty-two this year. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Whatever. <laughs> Three days off, nice.
Your birthday's in two weeks? Happy birthday. Happy early birthday. My birthday is in like 40 weeks. Yay, so soon. Uh, my birthday is dead in the center of the year, so I understand. But yeah, guys, not to be that person, but like, please keep the chat English only. Just because it's, it's easier on the mods to check you guys. time you out if we catch you talking in another language for extended periods of time. Looks so good already. Thank you. Etalan is meant to be like a doll who's like, well, she's a, she's a warforged um, based on like an ivory all joints doll. <laughs> Vincent call it. My favorite creator, thank you. Always wanted to play Warforge Artificer. My artificer that I'm gonna play soon is a is a water genasi. So excited to play them at some point. I love how the joints on all joints of dolls look. Same. I think it's a really cool kind of look. We had a really cool session yesterday, actually. Uh, my DM was like, was like, I'm trying to make something spooky scary, so hope I make you proud. And I was like, oh, bro, thanks, dog. He did such a good job. Those monsters were so cool. They were like these clay golems that were like constantly molding themselves to make themselves like better. And it was like, it was so cool and like distorted. It was a really fun session. Sorry if you can hear the wind. It just got really hot in this room. Actually, I'm gonna close it a little bit more. Just because it's starting to get windy in the room too. Can't hear any wind. That's good. But yeah, no, I just closed it because it was kind of. Ugh, getting kind of windy in the room anyway, so I'm like, I don't really want wind. I see hope you missed it. Your art was featured earlier. Unless you did catch that. Oh, 
a piece of shit as I hovered over the thing. LOL. Well, there you go, yeah. should save this file. That's a good idea. Yeah, sorry if I'm not that chatty today. Y'all. I love wireless earbuds. I also have, I have wireless earbuds. I have wireless headphones. My uh, my headset is a it's a wireless headset. It's not Bluetooth though. It's got one of those like little USB keys that you just plug in, so they're like always connected. It's great. Sorry, I need to look up references because <laughs> I don't know what shape to make this shield. Like earbuds, well, you can get wireless headphones. Moth wings. Looking cool, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a repair. Yeah. Doll Chateau has very unique quality doll body proportions. Oh, 100%. I am working off of the Popovi sisters. Um, that was what inspired uh, Etalan's kind of look. Um, I really like the way that they've, uh, like, on the joints on the doll and I was like that's that's what I want <laughs> I recommend the Popovi sisters their, their work is really nice her wings is a shield no no she doesn't have wings um and she just will have a like I mean bards don't get shields but like the, for fun I decided to make this shield like uh as if they were like wings hang on I took a screenshot of what I wanted actual outfit to look like. Because <laughs> I haven't actually designed that yet. Was she fighting? She's fighting nobody. It's just a just a pose. But she's a DD character that I've been thinking of playing for a while now. It's super windy, uh work in this kind of almost pixely kind of way even though this isn't pixel art it's just just this Iceopes was the, um, hang on, I can actually switch to it, hang on. It was this one, this one was Iceopes, with the long squiggly tail. Etalan, Etalan. 
Etalan. When you Google it, you'll find it at all, artist. Um, but I love Etalan's work. I believe she's Australian. <laughs> Some reason I can't draw a side view right now. I'm so mad. Um, sometimes it's better if you like don't try to fix what you've already drawn. Just restart, look at a reference, and you'll probably get it that time. It's supposed to be originally FNAF thing for my OC because I was bored, but then my friend did a thing. I was chosen to be a robot, so I repurposed it and updated the thing to be more original. The vibes. <laughs> If you ever want to make more original work, nobody is stopping you from taking your original fan works and turning them into something more original. It's amazing. Thank you. looks beautiful. Thank you. The way that I described Etalon to like a DM friend of mine was like I don't want her to be beautiful like in the way like oh she could be a model. I want her to be in a, like beautiful in the way that you catch like a glimpse of somebody's obituary and you're like oh that sucks that they died so young kind of thing. I want her to be a, like her proper design is like kind of like a haunting sort of beauty. That was the kind of vibe that I wanted her to be. It's just really, really sad. Beautiful, not like a flower. Beautiful, like a like a eulogy. That's another way that I described it. Practice what? Art, bro. You want to draw good? You draw. A dark beauty kind of yeah like just a very very sad kind of kind of beauty what style bro d don't try and copy a style work in your own way Do you think I sat down one day and was like, okay, I'm gonna draw in this style and then worked like that exclusively? No, of course not. Mm -hmm. 
He said it's a tough idea. You have to come complete the character to show armor and repair and stuff reflected. Kind of, yeah. I've got to, I've got to like... This wasn't my initial idea. I have a different character um, who's not a D&D character, just an ultra character of mine that I was going to revisit. Um, and he has these wings that he can summon that are made of stained glass. Um, and I was going to draw those, but then I'm like, wait, that's not a good idea. Because <laughs> there's no way I'd get to the stained glass in time. Aren't all styles just copies of multiple styles? I wouldn't say copies. I'd say that they take inspiration. And it's kind of just a mishmash of a bunch of ideas thrown together. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how my style came. Style came, it just happened. Exactly. That's how my style showed up, too. It's just like, I don't know. Got here eventually. Forms like handwriting, exactly. Styles are great, exactly. Personally, I'm a really big fan of working... Like, I really like having versatility. So I have a lot of, like, styles that I can default to. <laughs> I love that one trend that went around for a while that was like show me your show me a bunch of your art that would like that nobody could tell that was the, that they were the same artist right i feel like i'm the queen of that <laughs> hang on i feel i feel like i'm the queen of that 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 trend like i drew this a couple days ago hi fry Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Got this. <laughs> like, I drew that a couple days ago, and then... This was a commission I finished recently. <laughs> and then... This was something I painted for fun. <laughs> and then these are like late night doodles. It's like you never have like, like I like versatility a lot. Hang on one more. And then I did this like before stream, <laughs> right? There's like, Versatility is so important as an artist, I think, right? Like being able to do like everything, I think is like fun, you know? Yeah, that's what I did in seven minutes, just to get feelings out. But I saw Frey in here earlier. How you doing, bestie? Yeah, artists are identified by their styles. That's a Monet, that's a Picasso. The thing with Picasso, though, is that Picasso didn't actually get his critically acclaimed style until he was, like, way, way old. Picasso was a realist artist until he got into later ages. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember when Vincent or well Van Gogh Van Gogh also got his work Van Gogh, technically. Um got his work done like his style also when he was a little bit older. Lay down, try not to think too hard on it, I'm feeling a little better. Oh Frey. I feel that so hard today. I, I warned chat before 
stream started that this is the most energy they're getting out of me today. I'm also in one of those kinds of moods, I feel you there. Andy Warhol's a legend. A while ago there was a Warhol exhibit uh, at the AGO, Art Gallery of Toronto. Or Art Gallery of Ontario, my bad. Um, man, that was a great exhibit. It was really fun to visit. I went to it multiple times because it was just a beautiful thing to to go back to. That and the um, Del Toro exhibit, that was also a really nice one. Can make that haunting person of blood. I'm not going to. That was just a vent doodle. It's not a character or anything. I strive to get to the point where I can draw with something one way and something similar in a completely different style. I want to feel comfortable with different styles, yeah. I think it's just really important to understand how people work in their own styles. Like, as much as I say, find your own style, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't, like, do style studies. I do style studies all the time. Like, just to understand how somebody worked. But it's important not to limit yourself to just styles from, like, a specific era or, like, a specific country or something like that, you know? It's important to get to know styles from all over the world and uh, different times and stuff like that. Herbie cuddles help though, that's good. I uh, I will cuddle my varying Kirby plushies, because that's what is available to me at the moment. Omar, I think that's the most common form of vent art that I see, really. But, like... I don't know, I find it overrated. But it's vent art, so, like, whatever, I guess. Same with the Kirby plushies. Yeah, I've got a collection. I think I have... I don't know how many... Like, I've got 14 now? Doesn't mean that the collection won't continue. My partner and my best friend are enablers. A big sleepy Kirby plushie right next to my pillow. Fantastic. Got those cloud dice for my birthday in the mail today, actually, and the seller gave me a freaky little cow sticker made me think of you. Oh, cute one. working on an organic character that is inspired by the best artist being mother nature herself but i'm curious about how the art of nature could be characterized any ideas i would start because mother nature is so vast i would start by just picking a corner of mother nature and going down that rabbit hole my first idea was working with rock another idea that tends to be just really common is mushrooms you could also work with bugs bugs and plants and that sort of thing because most people when they think of mother nature they think of like flowers and moss i think it would be fun to capture the the terrifying nature of mother of like mother goodness sorry to capture the like terrifying idea of mother nature as well i think that, that could be kind of fun
Because nature is spooky. What do I like most about Kirby? I have a bias towards Kirby just because, like, Kirby was one of, like, the first video games that I played as a kid. Um, and, like, like, my first, the first Kirby game I played was in 2009. And then I watched the entire anime. And then, like, I just, I've, I've loved Kirby ever since. Um... I think my favorite part is just the creativity of the copy abilities. I think those are really, really fun. Really love the characters, too. I think that that's a good example of, like, really simple kind of styles working well. Rock has been carved via water erosion. That could also be really cool. You can get a really fun, really fun shape language from that. a lot of creepy things with just roots. Oh, 100%. Kirby anime? You've never heard of Kirby right back at you? Yeah, it was, uh, it aired in 2001 on 4Kids. Um, you can find all 100 episodes on YouTube for free. Like, they're just, they're just uploaded there and nobody gets rid of them. So, you can just watch them all there. It's how I watched it all. I can't sing the theme song because, um, it is, it will bring a copyright strike on the video. Uh, so I will not be singing it, but if you'd like to look up the theme song, the English one is superior to the Japanese one, which is rare. Um, so feel free to look that up. A hundred? Yeah, that's nothing. Just a hundred episodes. Some people chase tornadoes to get videos and still shots. Nature at her worst, 100%. I have this really long comic I'm working on. It's giving me a lot of art block. What do I do? Step away. Step away. Trust me. I, I know that feeling way too, way too well. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you start to get art block from the comic, step away. What am I drawing? This is my D and D character Ethelon. Um, but I'm giving her like stained glass weaponry, even though bards can't really have a lot of weaponry. It's okay. Bards can have repairs. <laughs> At least I think so. My best friend's bard has a repair. I don't know if that's home for them. <laughs> No worries, good luck. Valor Bard. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the, what a, That's what my best friend's bard is. <laughs> the art of swordsmanship. True. She's more of like a sad kind of bard, though. Lovely, thank you. She's a warforged. Built to look like an ivory doll. Spooky if was something out of Dead or Dying Coral could also be cool and haunting. Yeah, that is also really cool. Sorry, I just saw that. This song. 
pretty vibey though, not gonna lie. Did not expect a drop like that. A warlock who does stuff with fire spinning? That's awesome. What's D&D? &D? Dungeons and Dragons. Is she a poet or songwriter? Neither. Um, I've kind of made her so she's just like very in tune with the arts. Um, she's just a very sad artist <laughs> in that way. Like her singing reminds you of long empty hallways. Her art is like memories you've never had, sort of thing. She has a whole backstory that's actually really TOS, so I can't say it. But um, she's she's a really she she's a very very sad kind of character. Because usually the bards are like the happy ones, so I'm like, I want a bard that's just really really sad. <laughs> Bards tend to be like very charismatic and whatnot. I want her to be charismatic in the way that you feel bad for her. Are you gonna see the DD movie? Dunno. Siren's voice? Yeah, no way. Angry Mafia boss character that plays sad songs and his cello as a release. Songs are hard to nice. TV movie I want to see where a character dies and it comes back in the next scene played by the same actor. Yeah, I saw I saw a tweet about that. That's awesome. It's so funny. It's super true. My uh, I right now I play as a barbarian. Um, Corn. For those who've been on the stream for a while, know who Corn is. Um, but yesterday we did a we played again. Um, and he we we're doing a dungeon crawl right now. Um, oh, just for all the D&D &D players, like, my mood is not because of D&D. Corn &D. is still alive, don't worry. Um, but he, uh, we got to fight a bunch of these, like, clay creatures. Like, we got into the tower of this, like, mad scientist wizard kind of guy. And, like, he was trying to make, like, golems. Um, from, like, stuff that isn't magic. So he started to, like, you know do some mad science-y stuff. It was pretty- it's pretty awesome. Um... Watch a D&D movie after session when we can! Oh my god, crazy. Um... But yeah, it was a- the, the clay creatures were really cool. Um... I got to do- I got to flavor some of my- Uh, my DM is cool, and he gave- he's really great. He gives us- whenever- even though, like, you know, you get, like, a how do you want to do this when you defeat, like, the, the thing you're fighting. But he gives us, like, mini how do you want to do these for, like, like, if you just kill an enemy. So, like, I got three how do you want to do this from the fight. So that was fun. Um, I got to flavor Korn's attacks. Play violent. Nice. He really picked aberrations to put into golems and thought they'd be subservient. Real, right? Frey, I'm gonna be real. I thought we were gonna find the scientist in that box. Like, I didn't think it was gonna be Test Subject 38. I thought it was gonna be him in that box. Just like, oh, he's been gone this whole time, y'all. It's really only five? Wow. A tier for a villain, a wizard who found the secret to infinite spell slots, but the cost is his sleep, so he's ultra paranoid and agitated because of all the coffee. <laughs> we have like a our our um BBEG is a it's a tabaxi artificer. 
who's just like a mad scientist kind of thing. We got a big mad scientist theme going on, which is pretty cool, methinks. Probably gonna be the boss. Like, I'm betting right now he turned himself into a half clay creature abomination. That's what I'm thinking, too. Like, if he wasn't in that box, then I'm like, oh yeah, my boy is definitely a clay creature. Like, he's definitely just, like, taught. He, he pulled, like, a. Like, a Kirby Star Allies and threw himself into the vat. That's it. Oh, sorry. Whoever asked me what's my favorite thing about Kirby? No. My favorite thing about Kirby is how dark the endings are. That's what I like about Kirby. I think that it's very funny that the game start off with, like, this is Kirby and he's eating his favorite cake and then it's like, we have to stop the void from taking over the world kind of thing. That's, that's literally how Star Allies ended, though. It was like, this guy was trying to summon the void and, like, you, you go to- it was like a bad scientist kind of deal, same thing. And- Kirby goes up to him and he's like and he's like no you can't stop me from like summoning void termina and Kirby like you you beat him as Kirby and then he's like because he was gonna use Kirby's life force to bring him to the mortal plane and then you you beat him and he's like fine if he can't have you then I'll do it myself and he tosses himself into like his like summoning pit basically Uh, so he, and then we, su and then he summons Void Termina, and then we get to fight, fight the Void. That's how Star Allies ends. I'm just glad I got Atrox's current runes all mapped out. Super real. I might have to ask Kay a few questions about corn soon, but... Sorry, right, we're all good here. He still has two of them active. It's okay, I mean, we're still in the dungeon, so, like, keep them active, I guess. You've seen Guilty Gear, mainly Guilty Gear Strive, the art style in those games are really nice. I think I have, I just don't remember. Is it the one where there's like one character who has um, like dog prints on the bottom of her shoes? Is that the one with Bridget in it? Yeah, okay, yeah, then I have seen it. It's pretty cool, yeah. Drew side view, fantastic! Never thought about stained glass weapons. Is that ideal? No. God, no. Practicality? Definitely not. But visually, heck yeah. <laughs> One dog, she's Giovanna. Oh, I see. Vibes. So it's all too More stars were level. I literally could have lit up all the room based traps and understood what they did. Yeah. That's okay. I mean. We got Lunin. We got Grandpa, it's okay. <laughs> Just cast a Detect Magic. We haven't really been touched by any of the traps, so... Why 
I should look up references of her up here. That's a good idea. Cause I didn't I didn't do that. <laughs> I try and clean up this really messy line work. Transfer my rooms to you guys for protection. True. It's all good. I think the only one who really needed protection was Scribs, honestly. <laughs> Warforged Glamour Bard is literally Metaton from Undertale. See, that's the joke because she is a Glamour Bard. <laughs> She's a Bard of Glamour. I think it's really boring when you have a when you have like a D&D character that matches their like exact like oh this is how they should be kind of thing like my cobalt monk is very hyper it's very hyper and energetic excuse me <laughs> my barbarian is very like cute small The Dying Wizard Bard runs from the healer. Yeah, real, right? It's okay. You have a... You have the... The distance, um... Metamagic now. So, like, you're all good. g, &D character idea. Magician that uses a tome, but it's of spells or just whack people with their book. That's vibes. <laughs> of Warforged? What's the hair made out of? Synthetic hair. It's synthetic hair. She 
could easily think of a butterfly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's that's kind of the kind of what I'm going for, so I'm glad. <laughs> My centaur's also not a horse. Strider's a goat. <laughs> He makes synthetic hair in a fantasy setting. Homebrew. The campaign setting that I'm, like, thinking of playing her in has, like, machinery and, like... Like, they have, like, an airship and there's, like, mechs and stuff like that. And even if it's not synthetic hair, you could literally also just say it's like horse's hair. Like, she was built to be as human-like as possible. Like, as lifelike as possible. So, like, she has a lot of... Like, even though she's a warforged, like, her skin is, like, rubbery. Whether that's, like, a silicon or something similar to that. Eberron style? No, like, like, completely homebrew. Total, like, a world completely away from the books. There's a, there's a campaign that I work for that is 100% homebrew. In the setting and characters and whatnot. Um... They might let me on campaign too, so, we'll see. Like a monarch butterfly design. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be stained glass, so it's gonna have the, uh, the kind of transparency to it. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. I'm not looking at a reference. Like, I can't be bothered right now. <laughs> Loving the shield. Thank you. Guess the idea across that it works. True, yeah. A Warforge is basically like a robot. <laughs> Glasswing butterflies. I do like those ones. Did we change Sundays to three to four? I don't remember. You might have to check that one. Is she a singer? Yeah, yeah, she sings. How much time is left? 29 minutes. So you want to make that nine-tailed fox centaur? I just had the thought of a Warforged paper doll origami could be interesting too. Yeah, 100%. Um, do it though. Nine-tailed fox. 
Centaur Pog. That's it, that's my expended energy for the day. <laughs> uh, I need to color pick her, but I can't show. Hang on. We're gonna do this for a second, because I can't I can't show this file. <laughs> it's uh She is not clothed. <laughs> Hang on, I guess I could just like because I only need like her face. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Because I can't actually show the rest of her. Because I have drawn her to figure out her body proportions first. D&D feels easier to play as you play it more. I just someone joining right now thinking it ended. No, I'm sorry. I <coughs> I should really have a, a standby screen. Maybe I'll make one eventually. You can always use figure drawing size for artistic nude nude steps. R wow, artistic nude refs are super true. You want this brush? It's just the pencil brush in Photoshop, which is just it just converts your brushes to look like this. There are certainly like more specific brushes that do this though, and like what's it called? In other programs, there's definitely more specific brushes that do this. skin tone is not that different to her hair. <laughs> Did a kick pose recently and I was struggling to figure out how everything works. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be tough for a bit. Just look up references. Know that there's a lot of foreshortening.
Learning realism has actually helped me drawing different head angles. Yeah, no, it's good to learn realism. I probably have this character backstory details all planned out. An idea for your character direction thing. I'll DM you later. Okay. <laughs> Only draw anthroanatomy. I'm thinking of learning more human things, but I wouldn't use it. Only animals for me. It's good to learn humans. It's good to learn new things. Expand your horizons. I can guarantee you that all anthro artists also know how to draw humans. <laughs> anthro artists are actually some of the most powerful artists in the game, not gonna lie. Oopsies. I do this magic real quick. Keep the chat PG, y'all. I like that it's all just like slightly different shades of white, so it's like it barely looks like I've done a difference. <laughs> Depends the species, I just find it fun. I don't like looking at humans, no references of them, I just don't like it. That's fair enough. I mean, if you're not planning on doing anything professionally, like who cares? <laughs> Like, if you're not planning on doing it professionally, like, that's totally fine. But if you are planning on doing, like, art as, like, a professional thing that I just don't like it, uh, actually won't fly. <laughs> Which is annoying sometimes, but that's how it be. be honest I do a lot of starting soon screens I don't really like drawing what's it called whoopsie daisy I don't really like drawing um computers or keyboards like it's not like something that I hate it's just something that I'm like I'd rather not just because it's really tedious but like lord knows I still do it
there is a point, unfortunately, when, like, you work professionally where you have to separate your art from you. Especially if it's for work purposes. So it's just kind of one of those things where you're like, I might not really like doing it, but there's there's no choice, really. She remained barefoot. I actually really love how you drew the feet. Thank you. Yeah, no, she will. She remains completely barefoot. I think going to college for art is important. That's up for you to up up to you to decide. If you would rather not go to post secondary, that's like up to you. I will say, if you're like slightly less experienced, I don't think it's a good idea not to. But there's a certain skill point. I think. I think it's I think it's different per artist. So I'm like I so I sometimes hesitate to give advice on that because I'm like I don't want to definitively say no you don't need to go to college no you do or like uni or whatever I just think it's important to decide what you think is best for you and if you think that you'll need college or you want to experience it then go for it I think you get a, we get a lot of artists who are like, you never need college, you won't need it. And then some artists who are like, you'll never get a job without going to some kind of like post-secondary thing, you know? I think it's just important to understand yourself as an artist and to know where you stand on that. That's a decision that only you can make for yourself, really. Completely always barefoot. They have hooved feet. Oh yeah, that's my, that's my uh, my monk. <laughs> my monk is a centaur. <laughs> Would you like encourage references for humans? Because I have a mannequin I use when it comes to poses, but I'll use references along with it since I'll end up looking stiff. Yeah, hundred percent. Using references in general, I encourage it all the time. Like, I think that that's just something you should always practice and do as an artist. be for the person who's trying to learn or is it for more getting recognized to your skill by employers a bit of both i think it depends on the school like definitely it is really good for like connections like if nothing else then connections are a hundred percent like the thing that makes art school really good um Like, there are other things, too. Hang on. I need to look up a reference for this. <laughs> Is it really? Oh, God. this drawing. Thank you. Look, I'll keep on apologizing, but I'm sorry if I'm, like, really not talkative <laughs> right today. <laughs> 
Having the patience to look for references is a skill I get bored after five minutes. Uh, you shouldn't. It's it's one of those things that, like, once I started to really look at references, I noticed how much my art improved. <laughs> it's one of those things that you really should, like, at least try to dedicate yourself to. What's nice about Etalan is that her skin isn't technically skin. It's, like, plastic, so... She actually doesn't have subsurface scattering. Because all of her is like painted on, basically. So I'm just going for a really simple kind of shading on her. giving porcelain that's what she is she's just artificial she's like artificially made i haven't really decided what exact material she's made of most like mostly um like she has some bits of her like the outer layer of her quote-unquote skin is like squishy to mimic human skin um but she's all, like, mechanics underneath. She's meant to look, mimic the look of a ball-jointed doll. Wouldn't she shine too, then? No, she's got a matte coating on her. References make your work look convincing. I strongly recommend them. Google is just about anything you're looking for. Google, Pinterest, that sort of thing. 100%. This is like, I'm struggling. Because <laughs> it's so thin. Oh my god, hi V! I haven't seen you in a really long time. Hope you're doing well. How's life been treating you? What's the dark shading called between the tones, like on the neck? Shading. <laughs> oh, wait, you mean this? That's um your core shadow. It's the darkest part of the shadow. You're doing well. I am surviving at this very moment, but like I've already apologized to chat that it's a low energy day, but oh my god, it's 550. <laughs> kinda of wanna keep this shield really simple. Might actually just look better as only the red with a little spattering of something else. Just to break it up. Yes. Simplicity is key, y'all. <laughs> Those dreams are nice anyway. Thank you. Yeah, I'm doing my best. <laughs> This is- I, I imagine this shield is being like just completely flat 
Like, I don't think of it as curved in any way. just be able to see her arm very lightly behind it. Because it is just glass, really. Albeit stained, but it's again just stained glass. So you can still see through it. Ah, much better. There we go. I was like, something's off <laughs> about the color. There we go. Shield is so pretty. Thank you. Stained glass is opaque? No, not at all. Stained glass has a... It's translucent. Yeah, you can see a little bit behind it. It's just very, very distorted. Like, you can see a little bit of the tree. See some of the... The forms behind it. It's just really, really like oh, I moved like everything over. <laughs> it's just very, very distorted. It's not like it's perfectly opaque. Such a cool design. I'm seeing in full love it. Thank you. This is my Warforged Bard. Monarch butterflies are pretty. Thank you. Yeah, it also depends on the glass, yeah. <laughs> Core shadows are the darkest part of the shadow, yes. Yeah, so I'm just changing up the areas very slightly. Where some sections are. Like, I'm not being too meticulous about it. to give that kind of light implication that it's like see-through to an extent. And now to give it its sheen. Again, I want this one, I want the stained glass to be like flat. I'm not really thinking that it has any like distortion to the glass at all. So it's just gonna have a little bit of a, almost like a bubble look. So I kind of wanted to work with this very video gamey kind of look. I don't want it to be too crazy realistic. So pretty. Thank you. It's just reminded to check the stream when I see when I say you're scaring cloud people a little while ago. I can tell immediately who drew them. LOL, yeah. <laughs> it's like up oh, the clouds. It's just how clouds are, y'all. Am I right, chat? That's just how clouds are. Remember chat, we don't go cloud hunting without, you know, without a buddy, quote unquote. Clouds are so mad, they were very mad recently, yeah. just got so much cooler. Thank you. I'm trying my best.
Sometimes just a simple effect like this gets the point across, you know? Don't need anything too crazy. Right? You can already tell that it's like shiny, it's reflective. And like that's enough, <laughs> you know? Cloud meat is a delicacy, exactly. Yeah, music's always in the description, y'all. And if it's not, then, um... Remind me so I can put it in the description. <laughs> oh, whoops. I want to give this a light spattering. Just to show that it's just slightly reflective on there. Not too crazy reflective, but just enough. some of the, these lines and I'll call it done. I listen to some horror videos I used to listen to. It's where nostalgia abuser it was just royalty free. Oh, 100%. Um, you yeah, know, I got this music from Game Grumps. Uh, <laughs> their 10 minute power hour. <laughs> this is what they use during the 10 minute power hour. It's devious fear music. I was like, I like these. I like this kind of vapor wavy stuff. I dig it. Oh, it's royalty free. Even better. Just imagine the clouds make cute shapes for the kids. Cloud gazing. That's why people see certain things in the clouds. That's so cute. Yeah, no, Frey. We had a stream here recently where I came up with the whole cloud lore and how like clouds will like catch you if you try to hunt them. <laughs> that stream was a lot. It was really fun though. I find that the blank versus blank. I like the streams where it's like, should I draw this or should I draw this with quotation marks around it? Those tend to really put my, uh, good grief, put my improv skills on the line. Thank you so much, Sue, for the $20 donation. I appreciate it lots. Love how artists are able to put their ideas on paper. I want to be able to do the same, which is why I'm trying to draw better. Fantastic! Yeah, it's always good to practice. I always say to my friends who like are like, I don't think I'm good enough, or like I'm I'm scared that like I'm not good enough. I'm like, listen, you're an artist, and like you know, the people around you who can't draw think that you're a god. So like, just kind of bask in that for a second, you know. And you are in a weird way. You're playing God by bringing life to to ideas. I think that's pretty cool. It's a weird piece of advice, but I find that it helps some people. So I continue to say it. The same as, like, how do you build confidence? Listen to music that makes you feel confident. Listening to confident music boosts your confidence by giving you like a soundtrack to vibe to. It's like, yeah, this is this, this is that confidence booster. You know what I'm feeling? Oh, it's six o'clock. Okay. Well, I was done anyway. <laughs> Alright, y'all. That is 601. Thank you so, so much for joining. Um, if you don't know too much about us, I haven't been at the studio too much. I promise that I'm more energetic than this usually. But if you don't know too much about us, like to check out the studio we offer classes. WayneCanvas.com. Check out the classes that we offer, the classes that we teach. Um, this file that you see in front of you uh, will be available on our Discord. Join the Discord, exclamation point Discord. Talk to other art nerds. Talk to, sometimes I'm there. Um, and you'll be able to also get the final JPEGs of this file down to see them. 
Um, if you'd like my working files, a working file was just released this Wednesday. You're gonna have to join our Patreon um, or become a YouTube member um, for monthly working files. Um, and there's also class recordings, access to behind the scenes content, stuff like that. You'll be able to see that um, most weeks. All right. Next week, what are we doing next week? I mean, the Sunday, I always have to check. Hang on. Uh, oh, this Sunday is gonna be drawing dogs with Vanessa, looks like. Um, and then we're gonna be talking about rendering fire when we come back next week on the 10th. Um, but all right, thank you all so, so much for joining and I'll see y'all next week. Au revoir, bye-bye.